Um, Marlena, um, International Women's Day, is it important to have an International Women's Day? Uh, yes, I think it is. And um, it was always a really nice day, even growing up in Poland as a child, because we were uh, always uh, celebrating it. I think it was a nice reminder that as a females, we are still appreciated. So yes, I think uh, it's important to have, but also I think we should have International Males Day because <laughs> equality, right? Oh, yeah. And, and do you think we do have equality or do you think we're getting there? What's your opinion? I think we are getting there. I think it's definitely over the years I've seen it improve. And in the workplace and as far as the, school, the many schools I'm involved in, I think it's improving. But I think there's still some work to be done. Uh, you're speaking from the city uh, today. Yes. Um, what's London. been your political... So not political, professional career. How have you got to where you are today in, in, in a nutshell? In a nutshell, oh. I think um, education. Uh, and I don't mean in the old fashion, you have to go and get a degree at a university. Uh, I think what helped me the most is, uh, yes, doing the degrees, but while working. So part-time learning and you get the same degrees, but when you combine it with the learning on the job i think is more meaningful to the employers and in a nutshell continuously improve yourself so i think my motto is achieve something little every single day so if you can improve yourself a little teeny tiny bit every day you've got 365 days a year so in a year it will be a big improvement and and how do you do that some people read there's all sorts of ways. And there's some people like read self improvement books and things like that. Do you do things like that, or how does it work? Um, yes, I I did read a lot of uh, self improvement books, but there was also a lot of training um, I received at work, um, and I think the best one which I did was uh, when we uh, did our strengths profile. And then we had a coaching session with a coach and she said something important that you should play to your strength. Usually people try and overcome their weaknesses, which is counterproductive because it's against your natural, the way you are. So she said that just grow on your strengths and grow what you're good at. Obviously work on your weaknesses, but don't concentrate on that. But also in anything in life, I'm just trying to trying to do a little bit more every day. It doesn't have to be a lot, just a little bit um, every day. Out with your your professional work, your job, you also have you wear other hats, including chair of governors at a school. Why is education important to you? Why is that role important to you? I think because um, education has played a huge part in uh, my life. And I think I like to call myself a lifelong learner. And I think you're never too old or too young to learn. And the world is changing. You need to, we also no longer in um, the world where you go to uni, you qualify, and that's your job for the end of your life. I think now people change jobs, change qualifications, they change careers. So it's important to continuously improve yourself. And obviously you can do that for education. I also think uh, I'm passionate about educational system. In UK, it's completely different to the way it is in Poland. Um, but also I think, I like to think that by me being involved, I'm involved in primary schools and secondary schools, as well as at work, it's obviously apprenticeship and vocation, vocational education. I think I've got the holistic whole overview of education. And if I can support and make a little tiny difference in um, education for even one child, that will be a huge achievement for me. I'm sure you've done more of that even already. Now, uh, Robert Half on the Harlow MP, very big is Minister of State for uh, Education, very big on apprenticeships. And, and is that yes. what you, you, you have empathy with? You very much believe in that as well? Yes, I think apprenticeship is definitely a way forward. Uh, obviously, there are certain careers that 
you need to go to university to, I mean, you cannot become a doctor without a medical degree. Uh, but even becoming a lawyer, we've got really successful lawyer at work and she started as apprentice and she's got exactly the same qualifications as a lawyer that would get to go to the university. But at the same time, she's got six years experience, work experience, and she doesn't have a huge debt because she was earning throughout this whole journey. So I think it's a good way for young people to get the qualification, but it's also a good way to test what you like. Because I think my biggest, and I will always own up, my biggest mistake was going and doing the biochemistry degree. It was just something, because in Poland, you don't pay for university. And when you're 14, you go to equivalent of secondary school, but you pick up the subject you want to specialize in. So I picked bio, bio biology and chemistry. So that kind of, after four years, gave me only a journey for medicine or biochemistry or something in that subject. And I absolutely hated it. It wasn't something for me. And I think at that point in your life, when you're even 18, you're too young to know what your passions are and what you will be good at. And I think apprenticeship allows you to test the ground and see if you really, really like it without making a huge financial and time commitment. And finally, International Women's Day is on Wednesday. Um, are you optimistic about the future for women in, in industry and in society? Is it, are you positive? Yes, I think I can see that everywhere, even at the schools or and at sports. I think girls are more encouraged to participate in different, even in different sports. Uh, there are now mixed football teams of girls and boys which I don't think uh, was happening a couple of years ago. I think at schools, girls are more encouraged to pursue usually male-dominated subjects like science and maths. But also at the workplace, I think I can see a huge improvement. We've got now equal members of... We've got 50-50 of females versus male on the... Um, on our board no executive board, but also I'm now um, one of the leaders in our technology department, which again is male dominated. So yes, I can definitely see more positive trends and the attitude changing. However, there is still, because um, I'm following the UK uh, gender pay gap as well as our work gender pay gap, there is still discrepancy and I think more work needs to be done there.